Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, wherever you are. My name is William, and today this is another raw take on the uh, Applied Virtue podcast, Applied Virtue channel. Sorry for the impromptu live stream tonight. I just wanted to get my thoughts out there on a recent little YouTube controversy that's been brewing about um, the most inane things. And I wanted to get the bit of gold out from the straws, as it were. Um, I don't know what, is that the right expression? I, I, want, I want to get the uh, little bit of fine gold out of the straw of this debate. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I'm not good with my idioms. But um, a little before we begin, I'll have some announcements. Tomorrow at around 2 p.m. Central Time, I'm going to be doing a live stream interview with PaxTube about Christianity. If you want to come and catch that, uh, I suggest you tune in. Also, I'm, I've been working on a few things. Uh, recently, I've been uh, writing up the last part of my series on ethics on my Substack. So go and check out my Substack if you're interested. The next part is going to be about tradition and its relation to ethics and about the diversity in ethical views all around the world throughout different traditional cultures. Um, hello, David Carlson. How are you? I'm glad you came by and checked out and uh, checked out my channel. If you want to, come, hey, uh, if you want to come on um, for tonight, you you can do so. You can just send me a DM in Telegram or on Discord, and I can invite you on the stream. If for it's a very impromptu, relaxed stream tonight. But I just wanted to get my thoughts out there about. Um, this kind of academic agent debacle that, uh, you know, YouTube drama, it's not my thing, but I think this is all dying down pretty quickly. It was just a quick spat that just, uh, came out. Academic agent let out a kind of a screed against, um, Zoomers with a fetish for female abs, and this caught caused him to talk about how these men are emasculated. They want they are trans, pretty much trans women. Um, they are, uh, you know, they they want to be they want to be in the female role and women in the male role. Uh, they are degenerate. And then he had a follow-up stream talking about this kind of degeneracy. Um, and and then I today I watched Dave and uh, this other guy, uh, Friended and Stitch. I, you know, Friended being this kind of liberal guy and, you know, liberal anti-SJW guy, Dave the distributist being a kind of reactionary Catholic guy. The two were discussion, discussing, um, you know, this little controversy and discussing all this stuff. And what I found interesting is that the, um, uh, the, uh, it was, there was just this fundamental disconnect that Dave and Dave could not get past it. The fundamental disconnect was, um, first, friended, he didn't seem to understand the problem. He didn't seem to understand the problem with degeneracy in the modern world. Uh, he, sure, he talked about, you know, oh, wow, uh, porn, pornography is really killing the marriage market. And Adam, like, yeah, no. Yeah, no duh, <laughs> you know, that's uh, no duh. That uh, porn is killing the ma the marriage market. Um, on the other hand, when 
he he didn't seem to have a problem with that. He's like, oh, porn's killing the marriage market. So so what? It's just a thing. It's just a natural thing, you know. <laughs> it's such it, it was such an asinine. Uh, in his it, and the second thing was his obsession with economics. He, it had to be an economic explanation. It had to ultimately be a problem of men not earning enough money to compete with women in the job market. It couldn't be something else. It had to be like these economic forces of the free market that were the cause of this or something like that. It couldn't be something else. And this honestly is just a, a part of the liberal mindset, which is that it can never be something uh, something someone is doing that is the cause of the problem. It always has to go back to um, econo economics or, you know, in the case of some more right wing liberals, it would be biology, you know, the genetics. It, it can it, it has to be these impersonal forces that work like laws of nature and it can't be just uh, a product of you know the politics of the system we're in it can't be the fault of institutions it can't, because then it would go back to decisions that particular men made you know the great man theory of society which every liberal is taught to believe that that is bunk and it's really these cult forces of economics and genetics that are the cause of everything and by a cult i mean hidden forces in reality uh and i i don't want to uh, i can't entirely blame friended for this because number one this is the milieu that we're all growing up in and number two i don't think the distributist made as good of a case as he could have I think he didn't in particular emphasize the political arrangements that were going on behind the scene. He just kept referring to this process. And that's not very convincing to someone like um to, to someone like Friended, unless you actually start naming names, naming institutions, naming movements. That were that were active at that time, pushing these kinds of views. You can't just say, "Oh, it's this process that's been ongoing." Well, what kind of process? What's that process? Is it a political process? Is it an economic process? Is it a natural process? What is it? Uh, <laughs> it reminds me of the metaphysics debate that I had on telegram with this uh one pagan guy who is trying to claim that um oh her uh, that we need this process uh, everything comes about through this process everything material comes about through this process so we don't need god and i said and i kept asking him what is this process what what, what is this process uh who who is doing this process who or what is doing this process never end Never answered that. Uh, he he probably get back on me in on that one one day. <laughs> but the point is, just saying, oh, this is it's a process. It's not an answer in itself. You have to elaborate, and I don't. I'm not sure if Dave did or if friend maybe friend did wouldn't have given him the chance. But regardless, I think that particular live stream just illuminated something with me and it's something that i've been harping on on my channel time and again and it's that uh the liberal worldview per is something that the liberal ideology the kind of secular ideology blinds people to moral reality uh let me explain so traditionally the what is morally good for someone depends on you know the the actual nature of the person uh for example 
the fact that um, to give an, a very basic example, uh, the fact that certain foods are good for you and some foods are bad for you comes from the fact that uh, when this food intera- is ingest, some foods are ingested into their our bodies. It creates these positive effects for us, and that's based on our nature as humans. And sometimes these foods, when they and they are ingested, like if they are junk food, they they might taste good, but they'll make us sick if we eat too much of them, or if we eat nothing if we don't balance them with something uh, nutritious, right? That's a very basic example, but this applies to all facets, uh, all facets of life. If we don't have good social relations, that, that's on, and that is bad for us. If we don't have um, good, uh, good practices when it comes to our relation, uh, our um, more romantic or sexual relationships, that's bad for us. If we don't have a good education, that's bad for us. You, you see, so it all what is good or bad for us always comes back to who we are in it, as a matter of objective reality. Who are we as humans? What what is human nature? That is and so if you have an ideology that either denies human nature or obfuscates what human nature is, or otherwise gets human nature fundamentally wrong, then you're going to advocate for things that are completely bad for us. Um, And if you do advocate for good things, it'll be completely on accident. And I believe that that is the source of the harm that liberalism causes. Uh, the kind of liberal worldview obfuscates what is good for us because it denies human sociality as a part of our nature. It denies the fact that we are social animals as part of our nature. And this go uh, and this can be seen in their view of the state of nature. Y- you see that in Hobbes and in John Locke and Thomas Hobbes uh, and in Rousseau. You see in there this idea that we as sovereign individuals just have these passions, have these desires, and we just exist to fulfill those desires no matter what they might be. And you also see this in um, Friended's view that, you know, it's just the purpose of the economy is just to make more stuff. You know, if we had a widget factory, and the widget factory isn't pro- is producing five widgets when it could be producing ten widgets if we just restructured the economy like this, this, and this. Then we should then it's performing on un- it is underproducing. So we should produce more widgets. He doesn't ask the question: Do we need more widgets? Do we need p- more widgets in the economy? And friended. And, you know, Dave tries to bring this up, but Friended just brushes him to the side. He, he's stuck in that mindset because the liberal mindset is fundamentally amoral. And the more of a moral realist you become, the less liberal you become. All right. Let me repeat that. The more you consider what is good or bad for people as people, the less likely you are to be liberal. Because liberalism, at its core, denies that um, the the pursuit of what is good for you has anything to do with good politics. Politics in in the liberal worldview is all about fulfilling people's desires so that we can maintain this uh, kind of manageable status quo. Uh, And that's really all it boils down to. It's, it's a completely amoral philosophy. Uh, and the people who created liberalism were very explicit about this. You know, some of them were outright amoralists, you know, taking p- cues from Machiavelli 
uh, like uh, Spinoza and Thomas Hobbes. Some of them were like uh, some of them were these kind people who did believe in some kind of objective morality, but then they claimed that oh, that's so, the pursuit of what's good for you is just this purely private affair, and all that government can do is protect your rights. Uh, and what rights are those? Well, uh, in the modern world, those rights are basically anything, anything that uh, people can demand. If an interest group de ha demands it out of the government, then it's a right, basically. Uh, yeah, that's... That is the essence of liberalism. And it's part of the reason why uh, Friended just couldn't see why uh, see the problems here. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, what uh, got not out of the way, you know, the basic problem with liberalism and morality and you know what's good for you, let's talk a little bit about degeneracy. Now, the word degeneracy, it's it's got a very broad application nowadays, but uh, the kind of the kind of the kind of entomology of uh, degeneracy is that it's it, it comes uh, you know it it comes from this idea of um, de um. I don't know the it, the idea of the degenerate. It it, it comes from uh, this idea of just start something starting out good and degrade and then degrading over time. You know the the idea it comes from the um, there's the it, it comes from the word generation and then you add the prefix d. So generation means uh, growth, it means birth, it means creation, and then you add D in front of it, which means it is against birth. It is not birth, it is not creation, it is not growth. It is the opposite of that of those things. It's destruction, it's decay, it's, um, it's, uh, it's sterility. That is what... DJ degeneracy is sterility decay uh and uh destruction so when we talk about degeneracy we're talking about practices that lead to the those kinds of things and it's obvious that where um non-procreative sex comes in because non-procreative sex is sterile and that's what makes it degenerate right so non pro the obvi i mean it's blindingly obvious why we don't want a society in which non procreative sex is in which non procreative sex is just the norm it's just an allowable norm that everybody is allowed to do instead of something being something on the fringes non if non procreative sex is the norm and that means that procreative sex is sort of is so, procreation in general is just sort of uh, acceptable it's just unacceptable or at least it's there's no incentive to it and in that case um you just you just see the collapse of society very easily okay, from there because you don't have you know, all of our, especially in modern times, because um, all of our modern systems assume per, uh, that there will be uh, a per constant growth in the population. And if there isn't constant growth in the population, then the pyramid scheme of social security will collapse. And that, and all of our economic uh, systems will collapse. Uh, but that's that's the least of our worries. Economic collapse is the least of the worries when it comes to um, what happens when procreative sex no longer is a norm. What also happens is, I mean, if you don't have 
uh, marriage, then you do not have fam the family formation. A family is the building block of any given society. Um, we uh, human beings are, are social animals. Remember, we're meant from birth. We grow up in a so we are meant to grow up in a social environment. Um, and that first and foremost being the family. If we don't have that, then we we're, we're basically um, it's be, it'd be like depriving us of a limb. That's that's how radical uh, depriving us of the family would be. Um, there's a great book about this called Primal Screams by Mary Eberstadt, and she goes into how. Um, a lot of this identity politics stuff comes from the fact that once family formation is just once family formation is crippled, the pro the process of family formation is crippled by all these new sexual norms. What happens is people just uh, just grow up in a very scary world without any guidance from their family. And so they turn to politics as a substitute. And this is where you get the rise of this, these identity groups. And keep in mind, if you look at these identity groups, the you know black identity, lesbian identity, all these different groups, what you notice about them is two things. First and foremost, they, they're group, they are always grouped together because, um, there's this idea that this group of people, because they have common interests as that group, that identity, they will be safe. And uh, this is this is what it is why um, you know feminist groups have this idea that women need to be together for in a sister and kind of a sisterhood for safety because they don't have. Uh, husbands and fathers protecting them, those groups have been wiped out by feminists already. <laughs> so you need so you need this a kind of sisterhood built on common interests in order to uh, protect you. And there's also a therapeutic aspect. That's the second. There's a second. The second part of these identity groups is that this there's this therapeutic aspect to them. Um, we're we're in this together. We're in this hu hu struggle session together because you know we we are all basically mentally ill as a result of us being uh, not being raised in proper families. So we need to have this kind of therapy session. And we need to turn politics into a giant therapy session too. Uh, and it all goes back to the destruction of family formation. So all of the, but these uh, people like Friended who complain about identity politics, you know, who complain about identity, mud identity politics, uh, you know, stuff like the SJWs. All that comes from, you know, my parents called them latchkey kids, basically kids who grew up without a family because um, liberals like Friended, you know, liberals with the same ideology as Friended decided that we should be you know, just give, give people the freedom to make their own choices in life. And, well, look how that turned out, right? Because people, because the thing is, given human mimesis, given human the nature, uh, our social nature, people will follow whatever norms are set out before them. And if you set out before them norms of degeneracy, then they will act degenerate. If you allow people, if you are, uh, if you are allow putting out pornography and uh, messages about you know freedom of choice, then people are going to choose the uh, to act out the norms that you put into the, your media. That's just a reality of the situation. Uh, that's just how human beings are. But liberalism has to deny that because it denies human sociality 
as a fact. Even if a liberal, you know, admits oh, and concedes that humans are social creatures, they their view of sociality basically boils down to, oh, we just live in a society. Well, gee, you think? But, you know, it does, they understate how important human sociality is to the construction of the individual persons. And again, depriving people of something like the family or any other act, any other of these important aspects of human sociality would be like depriving someone of a limb. Yeah, they could go on living like that, but you just disabled them in a very real way. And I've seen this so many times. It breaks my heart because I, I grew up in a good family. I grew up with a mom and a dad who never had divorced. They've been together for decades. And uh, they, you know, my mom, she didn't, once she had uh, her children, she stayed at home. That, that's rare. And I look at people my age or younger, and I see that's rare. That is, that is a, uh, that is so rare nowadays honestly uh, and it, it i i can count on the number on um just there are just so many kids i've just met online who are like who say oh i my parents have gone through a divorce my parents are just never there i don't have parents i just live on my own just I, I I hate modernity so much because of this. It's 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 just and, and then people like friended have the gall to ask, oh, what's wrong with uh, marriage not being a uh, you, you you tell these uh, kids what's fucking wrong. Pardon my language, but seriously, just mm. and you know what the the, the thing is, friended. He, 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 if he were on here, he would, he would concede to all this. He knows from, you know, basic conservative talking points, you know, basic liberal talking points that, uh, oh, family are, family are important. You know, the data says that all the, uh, that two per, that the mother and father family unit, that that's very, the intact nuclear family unit is very important. Well, friended, why is it? that you support this kind of radical freedom of choice that liberalism allows. Do you think that maybe there are these uh, cultural forces that are promoting norms? That, you, yes, maybe the economic explanation has some value. I will, uh, I will admit that, but maybe, just maybe, the maybe the economic explanation also is pushed by cultural norms too. Because you know what caused men male wages to be to go lower and lower? It's the influx in large part, it was the influx of women into the workplace promoted by cultural forces like feminism. All right. And you know and do you want to know why feminism and uh, all these other modern forces. Do you want to know why they uh, they were promoted so heavily by our establishment? Do you want to know why? It's because of this juvenilian power game that's involved, where our government promotes these, quite frankly, freaks of nature, and as the norm in our society. You can, if you don't believe me, you can look at Alfred Kinsey's research. That was a huge breakthrough. You know, Alfred Kinsey, funded by who knows, billionaire Carnegie, whatever. Uh, his research goes round, and the and the government and all these big uh, big money makers, you know, promote and promote the hell out of it. 
and then that cha- and that starts a chain reaction that changes the norms of our society and they d- do this because it allow because systemically our liberal democracy has certain flaws to it that allow for uh, where um there are because uh, because leaders can't because um having a strong leader making decisions is considered to be authoritarian so what they uh, instead have to do is promote these gay ops so that the central government can do whatever needs to be done except now except now uh those gay ops are considered good in themselves all right so uh it, so i mean originally the new left was promoted by you know people in the cia and you can look at a book people like caleb maupin uh you know bread tube serves imperialism uh the these sort of new left types these bread tube types were promoted by the cia in america to for to be like an alternative left form of leftism that wouldn't upset the capitalist status quo and that it, and now that's just promoted as just a good even though the soviet union is long dead it, it, the soviet union isn't a thing anymore but uh liberalism still promotes it because um liberalism is stupid <laughs> liberals are dumb they they think that this this thing is just uh something more than just a gay op they they, they have fr- they have uh this idea that it's progress it's this march of progress yeah march of progress funded by the, the Carnegies, Rockefellers, CI and the CIA. Brilliant. All right. Of course, if friended were here, he'd say that I sound like a crazed conspiracy theorist. That was all that's also a kind of game that they play. Because uh, because to the liberal, it always has to come down to impersonal forces of economics. It can't ever be that there are actual people doing things it's not a cons- it's not some crazed conspiracy theory to say that people do things all right it's not a crazed conspiracy theory to say that rulers rule us and if you and if you think that some social phenomenon was just something from the uh, something from the grassroots you know just springing up bec- because of progress um that you have bought into uh, you have ideological blinders on honestly and it's not hard to find this information either you can find information about how herbert marcuse uh, the father of free love and the new left um was uh, was working with uh, hand in hand with the cia that he's a total uh, that he glows in the, the whole frankfurt school glows in the dark <sighs> ah gosh i sound like i i and i sound i, I mean it sounds like a, something you hear out of a crazed conspiracy theory but you can look this up you can see who uh, who was promoting these ideas and who was funding the promoters of these ideas you can you can see the scientists quote unquote like alfred kinsey and uh, and see who was funding their research you can look at the laws on the books and the people who wrote those laws and funded uh, and lobbied for those laws and funded the lobbying for those laws you can look all of this up but no it has to be because these occult forces of capitalism or progress honestly and that's really it, and that's really the failure of liberalism 
because they their denial of human social uh, that humans are social animals not only blinds them to prescriptive uh, uh, to the prescriptive to the moral dimension but also it just blinds them to how reality actually works all right uh, that's enough of my rant for today i just needed to get that off my chest um i will put links in the show notes for um things like mary eberstat uh, eberstat's book and uh caleb moppin's book uh, uh book bread tube serves imperialism uh I'll put uh, I'll put those in the uh, description uh, in the description. All right. So um, after this video, right? All right. So I'm gonna go through the ch the chat. Uh, Rockefeller Rockefeller cut funded Kenzie. Thank you for that correction. I'll, I knew it was one or the other. I mean everything. All of this new left woke nonsense, all of it comes from either Rockefeller. Most of it comes from, like ninety percent of it comes from either Rockefeller or, or Carnegie, if not Soros. Just the the sheer amount of money that these people put into transforming our society is, and how far it goes is pretty incredible, really. All right. So going through the comments, hey David Carlson, if you're still watching this, uh, I'm I'm still watching your channel. It's pretty good. I do recommend all of you check out David Carlson's channel. Very uh, very good stuff. Uh, it, hey to uh, to Silius, how are you? Um, you know, twenty first reaction. Blame it on anime. <laughs> well, anime certainly doesn't help. Anime certainly does not help this process, but uh, I mean, I haven't gone into a a, um, a full deep dive into anime um, on this channel. Maybe I'll do that on in another live stream. Perhaps um, there is there is a very good hit very in-depth history of anime a political analysis if you will of how politics and anime intersect and it's to summarize um anime was pretty uh, what we know now as anime was pretty much always a kind of intersecting with left-wing politics in japan the japanese version of the new left um and it comes from in a lot of the older anime people like um hayao miyazaki the the creator of there's the creators of mazinger z it, most of these people come from an era where the left was out of power in japan and so they produced these kinds of utopian leftist works uh or tragic leftist works like and uh, things like Gundam and uh, uh, Gundam, for example, or uh, Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind, and that promoted these kinds of uh, some uh, some left wing messages like feminism, environmentalism, pacifism, things like that. Um, the anime that we have now is mainly a product of the. Um, neoliberalism of japan the kind of hyper consumerist culture that built up over time uh, generation after generation and now it's very postmodern. you'll notice that a lot of, it, it infects the west a lot more than the east because in the east it, and it's uh gotten so bad that uh at some well let me put it to you this way. Anime, uh, Western media is not, the anime is bad, but Western media is just worse. All right. Take any of the messages, the kind of liberal progressive messages you see in anime. And I guarantee you that that message and more 
is being promoted in some Western franchise. That's that is what I'll say. Um, yeah, Japan, it's it's just copying us. It'll catch up to us in terms of pause eventually, but um, the trajectory it's going, I don't, I don't see things improving for them. So, uh, looking at this, uh, to Celius, family is very important, especially when it comes to influencing chances that children retain the faith of their parents. Yes, this is a good point. Um, but a good counterpoint to this is once the children get out into the culture, there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of ways that the faith remains in their life unless they're just naturally devout. devout. Um, you, you know, one of my friends, Todd Lewis, uh, he runs this podcast, Praise of Folly podcast, and he talked about oh, this with uh, he talked about this how when he grew up in a very fundamentalist environment, very conservative environment, parents homeschooled their kids, and yet when the kids left that uh, area, they pretty much everyone except for Todd uh, lost their faith and just secular, and just now they they are completely secular now. What happened is that uh, they went out into the culture. The church didn't, and their church didn't have anything for them there was nothing for them to do as christians right in previous societies the church's influence would have been felt throughout the society but because we live in the age of secularism where religion is purely private affair uh it's it, there's there's no utility to the faith so it just it, there's no social utility immediate social utility to the faith in this kind of secular worldview and so uh it just dies away and there are ways to counteract this if your church has programs for adults your church your church should have programs for adults to help them you know not uh, help them socialize you know get together have social outings um help them with job training help them find uh, find spouses and help with their marriage and raising children. It should be the church should be a full package because that's that's how it was in the early church. By the way, um, in the early church, the um, the Christians helped each other. You know, when if one of them was uh, if one of them was uh not doing well in terms of raising his kids or struggling to make ends meet, then all the, ch all the community of Christians would pitch in and help them. And that would be their way of uh, resisting the pagan culture around them. Because then they would have this network to rely on, even if the rest of society hates them. Uh, and, and so we need to revive that spirit before we uh, get get anywhere. Honestly, Fulcron says the degeneracy can best be defined as a continual perversion of a, of the core purpose of a given thing. Excellent, I, excellent idea, uh, and I this that's an excellent definition because you're hitting on the nail. It's a it's a perversion of the purpose. Um, you know, you, specifically, you're acting contrary to the purpose of a given thing. So an example would be, you know, pr uh, you know, our sexual faculties. The purpose of our sexual, uh, the purpose of our sexual faculties is twofold. The first is procreation, and the second is a kind of male-female pair bonding. It's supposed to strengthen the bonding between man and woman. And both of both procreation and uh, male and female pair bonding is supposed to help the children first by give, by creating the children, and then second by giving the children stability. What um, the the sexual degeneracy is using this um, using this faculty that we're get, that has this natural purpose again in a way that is contrary to the natural purpose. Using it for sterile sex, using it with 
you know, having sex with anime characters or whatever. That's uh, that is there. Uh, modernity. I just hate modernity so much. When talking about the effect of kids, I've literally had the same thought. Anyone with a moral fiber, a moral bone in their body, should have that reaction to our the status quo, especially if you've interacted with enough rock uh, uh, young people. Uh, Fulcron, did you hear all this thing? Jeff, Stitch, <laughs> objective morality. It made my ears bleed. Yes. All right. Okay, let me talk about Carl Benjamin for a moment. So Carl Benjamin is in kind of a pickle because he's a fan of Aristotle, but he doesn't believe in objective morality. How does that how is that possible? Who cares? Because he is living a contradiction, right? He and I'll tell you, you know, I I I'm it's literally his liberalism. He's running up against the framework of liberalism that he was given, that was given to him. And since he can't abandon it without, um, uh, without abandoning just huge swaths of his, going against huge swaths of what he's believed all his life, he has to say morality is just subjective, but somehow leftists are evil. You know, and then he starts talking about, oh, uh, I don't like the aesthetics of this thing. Uh, and that's that's another cope he uses to try to get around the fact that, yeah, this is evil. <sighs> Honestly, nobody, it, it, you know, liberalism is an amoral philosophy. It blinds people to objective reality. Next up, uh Bread tube serves imperialism. This is new to me. Yeah, there's a great book um, by Caleb Maupin. Bread tube serves imperialism, examining the brand, new brand of internet pseudo socialism. Uh, a quick disclaimer: uh, Caleb Maupin is kind of he, he, he's not based. He's a Marx. He is a an unironic tanky. He is a tanky, and he works for Russia today, and he uh, but uh, but he but but he does have good citations uh, for his theory and he gives a very good explanation for why bread tube serves imperialism american imperialism and the connections that bread tube has with um the state department i know that he said that it, one of the examples he gave in an interview he had with todd lewis is this idea that well there was this x x um uh, this x uh person from the um alphabet soup agency i forgot it was fbi or cia i think it was fbi and um it, it, and it was this anti this kind of cult expert this anti cult expert guy a psychologist and he knows that this guy has been talking to several famous bread tubers people like uh uh faraday speaks people like uh, like uh bosch people like um thoughts line he's been speaking to them behind the scenes and in the case of faraday speaks he came on to one of faraday's channel uh, channel interviews uh so that's one connection but also even if you don't posit like direct connections between bread tube and uh, the this you know American foreign pol uh, policy, you can see how bread tube would serve American imperialism through uh, you know through the actions of people like Vosh who claim that oh we should ha have more people in Syria, you know because we got to fight. Uh, fight the racists overseas you, you can see this with you know how the cia in the art in military parrots the same ideology that comes out of these people's mouths where do they where do you think it they got it from now what do you think is more plausible that uh they got it from the military or the military got it from them i'll leave that to you all right progressive are far worse in Western media and uh, 
but uh, anime definitely has more lewdness and violence. That's something I'm going to get into um, in a later stream on anime. Whole package idea, I, the lack of Christian community is a major issue. Yes. Um, is, I notice in Islamic societies, Islam per explicitly permeates all levels of politics societies. Christian societies currently have Christianity permeating implicitly at best. Well, this is part of the lie of secularism, right? If you have a religion, a religion is not something you just do on Sundays. It's not something you just do in a church building in pri or in private. It tell It's supposed to guide you in how you do everything. It's supposed to be your way of life. And when you pr try to privatize it, you let something else into that void. And that something else is usually liberalism. In in our society, it's liberalism, um, and it can also, but it can also be just a general, you know, drive for money and power. All right, and the uh, last one: degeneracy is inextricable from American imperialism. This is why leftist internet. Uh, and leftist internet internet leftoids will always agree with the glowies they nominally hate. <laughs> okay, dude, but that's just a private opinion, unlike my public opinions. <laughs> well, that's exactly how liberalism works, right? If if an ideology is labeled secular, um, th then it's it's allowed to uh, to influence public opinion. But if an ideology is related, labeled religious, then it's uh, it's relegated to the private sector. This is exact. This is something I pointed out in my three my video on secularism that I made a few, several months back. If you, I gave the example of Japan. Funnily enough, we're talking about anime earlier, and now I get to talk about world. You know, the imperial J J Japan during the early twentieth century. So in Japan, they officially had a secular government in Japan. However, uh, they basically, at the same time, they also had state-mandated public shrines, and a state man, and it was state-mandated worship of the emperor. But it was totally secular because these were secular shrines that prayed to the the state that served the state. Because uh, the people were worshiping the emperor as a divine being, it was totally secular. <laughs> <laughs> am I Catholic? Yes, I am. All right. Anyway, uh, uh, good. Uh, I'm so happy to have gotten all these great people here. Um, uh, Moto Kichiro Osaka. I will. All right. I think that's enough for tonight. Um, if anybody wants to uh, make any more comments, they'll uh, my comment section is open. Go nuts in there. But thank you everybody for watching. And uh, I've had a long day, and I just want to get this off my chest. You, you guys always put a smile on my face, and I thank you for that. God bless everybody.